The map range node can be used to do a bunch of things like this topography effect or even this planet animation. Even if it's easy to use, it might be confusing at first, so let's demystify how it works and remove all of the guesswork. I'm Dude Blender and let's jump right in. The easiest way to explain what it does is to show you. The blue bar is our from range and the red bar is our to range. The aqua horizontal bar is the value that we're trying to remap and the pink one is the result, the remapped value. Right now the value and the result are the same because the ranges are the same. They both go from 0 to 5. Note that I'm using these nodes so that, I can make the logic. that allows us to visualize how the node works. But it's exactly like if we were changing the values directly in the node. Now I'm gonna change the from min from 0 to 2 and the from max to 4 and you'll see a few things happening. The from range has changed. Now the input value and the result are no longer the same. If I change the input value, the result moves accordingly within its own range. So when I'm at the top of the from range, the result is at the top of the to range. Same thing if I go all the way down. Let's say now that I change the to min to 1. The result moves accordingly. So you see what's going on with this node. We're remapping this range to this range and providing a result that sits in the same relative position to its range than the input value has to its from range. In other words, if this distance was 10% of the from range, then this distance would also be the 10% of the to range. We can verify this if I change the from range from 0 to 10 and the to range from 0 to 5. 10% of 10 would be 1 and 10% of 5 would be 0.5 which is what we have here. Using the more technical vocabulary, we're linearly interpolating the result within the provided to range. If I go beyond the from range, if I have the clamp option checked, then the result will be clamped to the to range. If I uncheck it, the result is no longer bound by its range and it can go beyond its limits. You should also know that the min values don't necessarily have to be smaller than the max values. I can change the from min to be larger than the from max and it still works correctly. Of course, reversing the direction between the value input and the result output. In fact, we could also change the to range and reverse that one too. The node will continue to work properly although I don't see any reason why you would want to reverse both ranges. Just know that it can be done and it will still work. Okay, that's the basic theory. Now let's really master this node. You have the option to choose float or vector. They both work exactly the same way, except that with vector, you'll provide vectors that define the ranges. Next, you can select the interpolation type and you get four options. Linear is the default and obviously makes a linear interpolation, meaning that if we're at 10% in from, we'll also be at 10% in 2, 20 and 20 and so forth. It's linear. It's a one-to-one -one relationship. Now stepped linear starts to get interesting in the things that it enables you to do. You need to indicate the number of steps that it takes to go from the minimum to the maximum values of the two range. Let's say I wanted five steps. We would start here. One, two, three, four, five. So I can change this to five. Now if I change the input value, you'll see that the result goes up and down in steps. It can no longer take any value with in the range. In math, we call this discrete data. It can only take certain values as opposed to continuous data that can take any value within the range. This is how digital music works. You can take a continuous signal and sample it to a signal that can only take certain values. So discrete, continuous. We can also change here to smooth or smoother step. I'm gonna change this so that both ranges go from 0 to 5 so that you can see what it does. You'll see that the clamp option is gone because it is clamped by default. Now if I change the input value, you'll see that the result moves faster in the middle and slower at the edges. It has this sort of smoothing effect, which means that it's no longer linear. Now one more thing about the node, you'll see that it can take fields, as shown by the diamond shape of its sockets. If you don't know about that, I recommend you watch this video next. A field basically allows you to operate on individual vertices within a mesh. For example, I've got this circle and the position of each vertex goes roughly from minus one to plus one, both in X and Y. I could remap the ranges of the position of each vertex simultaneously. The position node provides the position of each vertex. You'll see that it's also a field. I'm using a map range node set to vector so that I can map each dimension individually. Whenever you have a vector, it's always X, Y, Z. Since this is a 
to the circle, Z is not relevant, so I just left all of them in zero. X, I won't change, so both ranges go from minus one to one, minus one to one, so nothing will happen in X. But for Y, let's remap from minus one to one to zero to one. Now, what do you imagine will happen if I connect this to the position socket of a set position node? A, nothing, B, squash the circle, C, scale the circle. And can you imagine the shape that it will take? So if I do that, it squashes the circle, since I'm remapping the Y ranges of each individual vertex. Let me tab into edit mode so that we can see both the original circle and the one with the remapped values. We are remapping this range from minus one to one to this range zero to one, changing the Y position for each individual vertex. Okay, that's all of the theory about the node. I guess it's time to take it up a notch. Let's do slightly more advanced stuff to really tattoo the knowledge into your brain. Here we have a color ramp, a map range node, and a multiply node. All of the inputs are connected to this value. The outputs of each node are shown in these numbers. Here I'm just using value to string nodes and to mesh so that we can see the results of each node here. We're remapping from 0 to 1 to 0 to 0.5. And we're doing the exact same thing with each of the nodes. So as long as we keep this value between 0 and 1, you'll see that all of the nodes result in the exact same number. Why? Well, the color ramp is basically a map range node that uses colors. You could say that this range is our from range. So this position would be zero and this position would be one. So if this handle was here, our from range would be from point 428 to 1. Since it's at the beginning, we're mapping from 0 to 1. That 2 range is defined by the colors. Black is 0 in the HSV color model, and this gray color, you guessed it, it's 0.5. So we're mapping from 0 to 1 to 0 to 0.5. So right now, this node is doing the exact same thing as this node. Now, multiply is just multiplying by 0.5. We could, of course, change this to divide and divide it by 2. And for these from and to ranges, this is the equation or the formula that it takes to make this remapping. As you can see in Blender, as in life, you have different tools that you can use to achieve similar results. If you want to fix a chair, well, you can use a screw or glue. And even if they're not exactly the same, you get a comparable result. Same thing in Blender, you can use different tools to get to the same place, depending on what your project requires. Note here that the smooth step interpolation is the same as the ease interpolation in the color ramp. If I change the value, you'll see that the color ramp and the map range results are the same. And now, of course, that for this specific task, the map range node is way better than these two. It can take negative values and use values that go beyond one. In the color ramp node, you cannot go in this position beyond one, even if you type two. And as for the math node, whatever you change from any of the ranges, you need to make the calculation again to get this factor and probably add an offset value. So, of course, when you're mapping ranges, the map range node is the best tool that you can use. Now, why and when would you ever want to to map ranges. And honestly, there are so many ways, it's really versatile. The first reason is that many values in Blender go from zero to one, and then you can easily use the map range node to remap those values. Here's a setup with a grid and a noise texture modifying the Z position of each vertex. The map range node is disabled so that you can see the mesh. The noise texture has this normalized checkbox that keeps the values between zero and one, so we can easily remap this to something that suits our project. Project. Let's say that we want the mountains to be higher. I'm going to re-enable the map range node and we can easily get something like this. If I increase the from min, we can even flatten some parts of the terrain. And similarly, if I decrease the from max, we can also flatten the tops of some of the mountains. So we can get something like this. We can also change this to stepped linear, change the steps to something like, I don't know, four, and get this sort of effect. I can even change the two max to a smaller number and we get something like this. We can also use it in shading. And in fact, I think this is why it was originally created. Then they just ported this one to the geometry nodes. Let's say that we have this layer weight node controlling this mix shader. And we can use the map range node 
to fine tune the material to get what we want. And of course we could do something similar with the color ramp. So in this specific case it's really up to you which of the nodes you use. Now if I connect the map range node to a displacement node with a stepped linear interpolation we can get this sort of topographic effect but now using a shader. And to show you one final example I use the map range node in this planet animation. Here I'm mapping the size of each dot to the angle formed between the position vector of each dot and the position vector of this empty. So the smaller the angle between both, the larger the size, which gives us a lighting effect, simulating a light source which actually looks pretty cool. We have a dot product, we get the angle, and we map the angle range to a scaling range that we connect to the scale instances node. And this is one of many situations I've encountered where I was thinking, ah, how can I relate these two variables that have nothing to do with each other? And oh, map range node. That's it for today's video. I'm Dude Blender, your personal Blender engineer. Happy blending.